Okay, so this is the meeting of the CNC for October 8th, 2024. I'm going to call roll. Will Gatchel? Uh, present. Uh, Ken? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Daniel, sorry. Um, and I'm Colleen Oveka, and we know that Christian Burling and Peter Somchich are not here tonight. Um, and our city council representative, Rich Blaylock, may or may not be joining us. Um, so that has three of us here and meets a quorum for that. Um, so our first order of business tonight is just kind of a quick recap of National Night Out. Um, unfortunately, we did have to postpone National Night Out a week. Um, and there were definitely some people that had some concerns about postponing it. Um, I guess it was the first time in a long time that it's been postponed. Um, and at the end of it, I think that the right call was made. Um, we did go to uh, Spinnaker Point still had theirs on the original night. And as we were there, it was sprinkling. People were underneath the overhang. Um, so as disappointing as it was to postpone, I think it was the right thing to do. Um, and the police department made that call. Um, so we heard from, there were a lot of neighborhoods this year that had a hundred, a hundred plus people this year, which was, um, you know, a great turnout for a lot of them. Um, oh, there were a few that had, you know, 10 or so people last year and were up over 50 people this year. So it seemed like there was a, um, increase in turnout for almost every neighborhood. Hey, Councilman Berlin. Hello. How are you? Good. So we just started. Uh, the meeting is being recorded, and here we have a a minimal quorum, <laughs> but we're we're rolling. Awesome. Calling any idea of total attendance? I'm still trying to get some numbers from people. I haven't heard back from everyone. Um, I would definitely say we're up from last year, and I'll submit those final numbers to all of you um, when we have them. Um, I heard from a lot of city council members that. Um, you know, just trying to, as we go forward and continue this event, trying to figure out what the best way to do it. Um, you know, I was over in Maple Haven and we had a city councilor that stopped by at 655 and still had two more places to go. So just trying to figure out, you know, what the best way is to divvy people up. Um, you know, I think that people are very grateful whenever they have anyone show up and um, it's, we don't need to be spreading people so thin. Um, yeah, I. Which kind of your impact? I agree. Um, you know, and I, I've been, you know, this is my third year going to them. Um, so I purposely only signed up for three, and I only really made it to two because I was like at Elwyn Park, and I'm like, well, if I leave now, I'm gonna be like, hi, bye, and then I'm gonna be showing up at the next one like as they're cleaning up and being like, hey, can I talk? You know, and just not genuine whatsoever. Um. So I've just found that like with the two hours, two with, you know what I mean? The travel time. And then you actually get to have a genuine visit where you get to go talk to the different groups. You know what I mean? At at the neighborhood kind of, you know, like a pan away manner there, there'll be like a pick table picking tables over here, a couple over here. And you get to go to both sides kind of, and kind of, you know, engage with everyone. Um, that was just my take. And I think, you know, at, as the city council goes, you know, you guys can have a sit, say and make the decision of how you do it we just want to make sure that when we talk to you guys about it that you don't feel obligated to attend you know yeah. six or seven each I, I know what um when we we signed up through like city manager and stuff like mm -hmm. that and some counselors had signed up for six or seven mm -hmm. and i was like yeah good luck uh, like literally you'd be driving by like hey you know and then just not even stopping um and so. i think we're very fortunate where the city council the current city council has been you know, in office for a while. So a lot of them sort of know that, but as over the years, city council members change and all of that, you know, making sure that people know what are real ex realistic expectations going into it um, so that they're not feeling too spread thin. Yeah. I think in the past, there's been an expectation that multiple counselors get to every neighborhood, you know, that there's this kind of really blanketed representation but uh for for our experience um echo avenue uh um uh kind of you know behind um woodbury ave you know we had um a counselor he was there right in the beginning for about you know a half hour 45 minutes which was great but people who have you know yeah didn't get there till like six yep. 
there was nobody, you know, there was nobody there. So to, to your point, you know, having, having, you know, less places to go and, and staying a little longer, I think would, would be a, a more successful yeah, yeah. way to, to try to organize in the, in the future. And, yeah. and so, yeah, I mean, and we had, we had great presence from the police department, the, the drone guy showed up <laughs> with all his stuff. Fun. Yeah. It was pretty, pretty fun. And just to fill you guys all in, um, you know, we had a, we had a meeting with a lot of the city officials, fire department, police department, a lot um, upstairs in the city manager's office kind of going into this. And there was, you know, the discussion that's happened over and over again about, do we limit the number of neighborhoods that are doing it? And the police department said that they really don't have a problem staffing it. Um, so if we kind of go forward with the expectation, the original expectation that this is a city police event, you know, you may not get fire at every event, event. Um, you know, police staffs the event to be the event, um, fire a lot of the fire department that goes around or the people who are on duty. So if they have a call, they're not going to make their appointment, you know, rightfully so. Um, public works also has a hard time staffing it because they don't have anyone that works at night. So everyone that comes to National Night Out from DPW is being called in to do this and signing up for it. Um, so, you know, I think we had a really good event this year. I think a lot of people enjoyed it and just trying to keep those expectations where they're manageable for everyone. To the point that <clears throat> this is a, a police sponsored event, yeah. um, we advocated a couple of years ago for the night out to be not like five big block parties but in, in kind of like ward centric parties but actually more community neighborhood and um i think it's really important to to have these these organ these these groups and parties in the neighborhoods where if you're out of town these are the neighbors who are going to be walking past your house or you know if you need a cup of sugar they like they're these they're, it's your actual community and i think there's a huge value in in the nno connecting people like that and also having the police be able to to engage these smaller neighborhoods at that level i think i think there's a, a huge value to that and so um yeah in as long as the police are able to staff it yeah i, I think fire trucks dump trucks are are kind of gravy but yeah. the core to, in, in my opinion the core is is really having those smaller scale more smaller scale events throughout the city so just two points kind of going forward. Um, there's been discussion about, you know, well, what if neighborhoods want to add? And we're really trying to push the the like non-national night out block party. So if a neighborhood wants to join, we're trying to connect them with a the neighborhood. So, um, you know, with us in Maple Haven, if Buckminster or one of those neighborhoods, Martha's Terrace, if they want to do national night out, they can join us because they're in close proximity to us. But if they want their own event that has police, has fire, has a neighborhood block party, you know, there's protocols in place of how to have a neighborhood block party that's not part of national night out. So we're not stretching those resources so thin. Um It's a it's a great it's a great point and 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 so like in the past um, with our neighborhood we've we've reached out kind of across Woodbury Ave, Farm Lane, Rockingham Avenue, you know, just just trying to in include those and and yeah. again it's it's a little further but it's still it's still where we walk the dogs it's you know it, it's it's I, I still consider it a pretty right. localized group versus they there were block parties at. Um, uh, at St. Mary's and um and and in the in the parking lot and you can't necessarily get to it with like with little kids as easily right. we have Betty's dream you know uh, uh, housing for for disabled uh, Portsmouth residents um our little block party you know when you see you know you see these, these some of these uh, folks don't really get connection with other people at that level and and it's like you know, it, it it's awesome anyway it like totally makes my year yeah. <laughs> seeing the betty's dream yeah. residents like totally connected with the rest of our neighborhood it's it's cool you know not having them you know have to travel um there was a just my thought of my last point um there what there was a discussion about oh, well do we only 
have the city councilors go to five neighborhoods and we pick one neighborhood in each ward and kind of what that kind of boiled down to is Will and I are essentially in the same ward like we're both ward three but we're across the city from each other and there's two downtown wards so if you want to see a city councilor you can go from one downtown ward to the other but I'm not going over to Echo Ave to see a city councilor for national night out um, so that's kind of why we decided to go back to having them at each neighborhood. Yeah, just sort of planning ahead for the notes. We, as a group, sort of got together in the summer and rushed into neighborhood night out. So ideally next summer, should we start planning and notifying other neighborhoods who may not have been involved in the past, um, starting in May, June? So I believe last year they started their meetings in April okay. um, about it, which seemed to be a good timeline. Um, you know, get the word out that the even just the date um i think that neighborhoods last year they didn't do i didn't get any this year but last year there were neighborhoods that just emailed into the cnc and said you know i hear that this is happening we're not part of it how do we be part of it um and at that point we would say you know these are the neighborhoods that are participating let's connect you with someone there um and then if you're interested in doing a block party Here's how you do it. Okay. Um, that's kind of, we had one neighborhood this year that um, I didn't connect with her until like three days before the event. She had an RSVP, hadn't registered, anything like that. So I said to her, you know, I said, unfortunately, we're not able to sign your neighborhood up at this point. We have everything scheduled out. Um, if you'd like to have a neighborhood block party this summer, here's some information of how to okay. do it. Just so we all know, when 2025 arrives, yeah. we'll start planning something yeah. in April and then take it from there. I think that's a good starting pot. Yeah, from a city council point of view or communications point of view, is there anything that the city would um, want to do differently to, to gain effectiveness and turnout? Um, I think Monty Bohannon, Director of Communications, Community Engagement for the city. Um, I, I think the, the number one thing is just getting that information as soon as you have it so that it can get into the what I call the machine right so that it gets into the newsletter it gets it can um you know tag the city of uh you know city hall in any Facebook post and then we can reshare it and those types of things versus I, I don't I don't know that there's any um other refinements that need to necessarily be made from from my perspective um again it's it's kind of mainly handled through the the pd like they're they're sort of running the show and i'm i'm helping to amplify and i think you know along with that is making sure that all members of the cnc have that connection with you because you know christian and i were really the only two running national night out uh, Ken and Will are going to be doing the forum. So making sure that each group and each event has a connection with you. So it's not just one person trying to pass along information. Right. And that that's, um, you know, different committees do it all different ways, whether it's, you know, the it's, you know, one point of contact, it's the chair that wants to control that communication. Um, and and other committees it's it's much more like that where it's where it's kind of distributed everybody kind of has their role or there's you know for example the um the arts one of the arts committees they have a communication subcommittee that that's all they do and they're the ones that talk to me and pass me information great would you guys like to speak about the forum Sure, Ken, you've been doing most of the legwork, yeah. so uh, by <laughs> all means. The forum scheduled for November 13th. We have the space at Little Harbor School. The mayor's office has been notified. The fire department's been notified. Have you had a chance to reach out to the um, police and public works? I've not connected with them yet, but um, okay. I'm trying to get that done. And, and, and that's actually, all the agencies we need to reach? Um, that is, yeah, so, um, yeah, city city manager's office, fire, police, DPW. That's, yeah, that that's it. Okay. Uh, and um, Councilor Blaylock, I'm not sure if you are going to be in attendance, but there's typically a, a city councilor in attendance. Yeah. My, when sure. is the date of the forum? The, August. November 13th. November 13th. The Wednesday, it's... Yeah, so if I um, 
like typically I'd have an HTC meeting the second first and second Wednesday. Okay. If there are two meetings, there might only be one meeting in November. Okay. Um, but so I'll try to be there if I can. Um, that would be my only. Um, for the rest of the CNC members, obviously, you two are kind of emceeing the event. Um, I'm planning on showing up, being supportive. Is there? Do you have roles for any of the other members that are showing up, helping people sign in? Do you? Not really. Just okay. just being supportive, and you know, and if if um, if things for whatever reason are 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 getting. <laughs> loud or you know whatever and and you know my pleas for <laughs> civility <laughs> uh you know are, are, are not going uh you know are not being listened to you know just just to you know mm -hmm. uh, yeah step in uh, there was the, the last forum i was at uh you know people were just kind of not stopping mm -hmm. and you know when i raised my hand and said you know by the way you know all of these wonderful city officials are here <laughs> and on a volunteer basis. It's eight o'clock at night. We should <laughs> let them get home and, and have dinner. And, and, uh, and, and, you know, there's the opportunity to come to the CNC meeting, you know, so just, just kind of having that reinforcing um, there. Uh, otherwise it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a pretty casual event in terms of really having that direct access between residents and, and the community and the city leadership. So. Um, I was thinking that, um, we, you know, we have the neighborhood contact information from National Night Out. I don't know if it's been done in the past. Have the, you know, neighborhood representatives been, have you guys reached out to them and said, you know, this is what's happening? I know some of the different neighborhoods have uh, Facebook pages and email contacts. Has that been? Oh, for that ward? No, yeah. no, I have. That's, that's a good. That's I'm a good not one. familiar with the next step for that. Yeah, um, I am not either, and I don't believe it's really been done. I think it was has just simply been okay. posted on the city website. Uh, okay, but, but yeah, reach out to. Um, so will this be mostly focused on Ward Five? Yeah, yeah. This would this would just and and um, Christian might be able to help. This it's his ward. I don't know who else lives in Ward Five. Well, I have all the neighborhood contacts from National Night Out, so right. we can, we can communicate yeah. about yeah. that. Uh, Try to get something out. Excellent. There was, um, I believe, it was when we had the National Night Out conversation. Um, and we were talking, you know, with the city manager's office there, we were discussing the forums and, you know, how it can be difficult in the past. It's kind of been popcorned on which neighborhood now that we're on five, is it possible to start over at one next and have them in kind of chronological order so that people know when to expect their yeah. word coming up? Yeah, that, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> one, four, two. Yeah. Yeah, with, with the presidential election and just the busy, just how busy everything has been, you know, we we just dialed it to one for this year. We're oh, right. To, um, so, so the fact that we're kind of off of the rhythm anyway, yeah, it's a it's a good time for a restart. And yeah, just to start over at one. Yeah. So next is for is Ward One. Um, and I'll just say it though, you can always remind presidents that they can email the city council. They can email the whole city council. You know, just um, you said some people might have had lengthier, you know, and things they wanted to express, um, but they're, you know, always welcome to email the council. That's a great point. Most people are aware of that, but some might not be. Yeah, and my apologies. I actually had a slide for this to oh. this, this topic, and I didn't get organized. We're talking about having a slide for this one anyway. It's done. It's sitting on my laptop. I've seen it. <laughs> uh, and uh, at any rate, just a just a backdrop of Little Harbor School, uh, which is where it's going to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll reach out to you to get the neighbor night out contact. Yeah. So I believe it will have to be sent from the CNC email address because. We told people when we got their information that it wasn't going to be passed around. Okay. Um, 
So maybe but, you can just yeah. Do it on if your you phone. if you want to create an email that you want me to send out, then um, I'll send figure out who's in that ward and send it out. Okay. And then we should invite all the city councilors in the same manner. Um, I believe city manager's office. Do they contact you guys too? I don't. I don't know if they need if they need just a just a, a prompt to do that to, to just a, a quick email saying you're you're invited. I'm 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 not sure where that okay. lies. Anything else about the forum? No. Um, do you know for sure if there's um, Zoom capabilities from Little Harbor School? I've been told yes, and I've been told no. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm sure if we, if we, uh, we could reach out to Kevin here, Kevin Russell. Um, he might, I can send you his email address. He, okay. he would, he would know, or someone, someone from the school department might know. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure who's on the IT side for school, but Ke Kevin's a good place to start. Okay. I'll probably reach out to you early next week to get his. Sure. And if we take care of all these different tasks, do we need to meet again as a group before the ward? I think that's up to you and Will. Um, if you feel we need to meet again before the forum or? No, I think we're fine. Okay, we can stay in contact. Yeah, absolutely. Meet we have. Yeah. I'll try to be responsive if I get an email from either of you. and But I think it, you know, yeah. that goes fairly smoothly. Yeah. Okay. Great. You're up. Oh, <laughs> excellent. Um. Again, my name is Monty Bohannon. I'm the Director of Communications and Community Engagement for the city. Um, and I uh, thank you, Will, for asking me to come speak about uh, how this committee and uh, you know my my department uh, can can work together uh, for um, communicating out and hearing from uh, the residents of Portsmouth. And that's really the, the core of my role is not only to sort of broadcast um, information that residents need to know, um, but also the, the other side, that community engagement side is, is listening to um, whether good or bad, what's, what's going on with residents and, and how the city might be able to help. So I see us uh, you know, in the future, working really closely together. And, you know, as I alluded to a little bit, um, you know, we can, I, I have some uh, tools that I can bring to bear for that, whether that's the newsletter, social media. Um, and really, I, I've always seen this group as, um, you know, having having a good ear uh, for across the city that, you know, people m may not talk to city officials or even the council first they may turn to their neighbor and whether it's it's a it's a gripe or a uh, oh hey did you know that that we're doing this um less frequent uh but but still it's it's thank you for that yeah. <laughs> but and and that's what that's what i hope um that that i can convey is hey you know the city does a lot because you know i've lived and worked in the city. I lived in the city for a long time. Work I've worked in the city for more than two decades. And it wasn't until I came to work here that I realized just how many things and how many services the city provided. So and I felt like I was pretty plugged in. Like I, I watched council meetings. I I, you know, I listened to some committee meetings. Um uh, but it it really open my eyes to just how much is going on. And, and I want to make sure that as many people know about the services and, and things that, that the city provides, um, and also that, you know, we're here and that those emails to council really do matter and, and that, that people are listening and responsive. Um, and it may take a long time to see full action on, on an item just because, you know the, the the pace of government is not always um, what people want to see, um, and sometimes you know things take a long time. But know know that, that there's there are people here who who genuinely care and want to make life better. Um, 
all of that said, I think I, I, I gave to Colleen and Ken, I'll give you one of these too. Um, it is very much a draft. And so if there's, if you look through this and see if you have feedback for me of like, Oh, Hey, this, this is missing. Um, it's designed really, this is a, a, a template that is designed to not only, um, sort of go through the laundry list of ways I can communicate out to the city. Um, also sort of strategies for committees and boards to think about, oh, we've got an event coming up. What are what are the steps that we need to do? Who who do we need to contact? What do we need to do? Um, uh, you know, do we need an invite to city council and and the city manager's office, how does all of this work? And so to try and make it as easy as possible when you're doing those events. So there's a lot less friction um, from our end with the things that we can control, knowing that there's always going to be, you know, weirdsies out there that, that can throw a, a, a monkey wrench into the works. So again, my goal with this is really to sort of give you a template to work from, um, and my hope is too that as you know as you are communicating out if there are messages that um you know that the the city would like to convey or i'd like to convey um that we can i can i can share those with you whether that's like encouraging people to sign up for the weekly newsletter which is full of information um or you know about events that might be um, of interest, like, you know, the fall family fun fest or, um, you know, when are trick or treat hours, like those types of things that I know that I can, I can deliver to you directly. And in the same way, if you have, you know, once you have national night out info or ward forum info, get it to me. And then I can help broadcast that too. And, um, and this is kind of a, a roadmap of how that works. Um, and I'll say one more thing about the, um, about the website, you know, I think I've sort of on a on an ongoing basis trying to go around and and talk to each of the committees, um, either either myself or a proxy to say, um, you know, if you have content that you want on your committee page on the website that's not there currently, um, if you draft it up. I can post it or, or someone can, we can get it up on the website. And one of the great, the, the um, public art review committee is kind of the one that I've been using as the showcase committee for it. It has, there's a lot of information there. Um, but if you wanted to have sort of a, what is, you know, what is the national night out? you wanted to place it there that's sort of an evergreen piece or there are some other initiatives or things that you're doing or thinking about um those can go there as well and you know if people i think of it like your your you know city of portsmouth welcome kit right you know you want to sign up you know you're new to new to town you want to sign up to get on your email list for the neighborhood that i just moved into you know, something like a, a mechanism so that we could, we could capture that and do that is some couple of things that I was thinking about. Um, but happy to take, entertain any questions or um, anything. And, and uh, like I said, my, my door, uh, both physical and, and virtual is always open. Um, so one thing that I was wondering, um, I did it so long ago, I don't even remember how to do it. So it's like signing up for the city newsletter. Is there like, a QR code or something that we can have at, you know, forums have at national night. Heck yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so we just need to get that. Yep. Um, you know, cause we have an email list. I'll, I went through it a couple weeks ago and 75% of them bounce back. So, you know, that's not super helpful, but if people are already getting the newsletter, if we can, you know, have that collaboration so that, what we would send out as an email, they're also getting in the newsletter, then it's not as big of a deal. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And then I don't know like how that list has been kept and maintained or if it's, you know, it's, it's just sort of in a spreadsheet or a 
a Google contact. It's Google contacts. Yeah. And the, the problem with it is, you know, some neighborhoods have tried to do the, oh, well, when you come to National Night Out, sign up with your email. No one wants to come yeah. to National Night Out and give out their email address. Um, I know that they were getting email addresses at the forum. Um, you know, whether or not people really want to give them out and if they're willing to do that, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, again, it would be it would be really nice to sort of automate that and have it, you know, you have an iPad at the forum and you're actually filling out the form so that yeah. then somebody doesn't have to sort of decipher somebody's handwriting. Um, hmm. Let me think about that. <laughs> Monty and I already talked before the meeting started. There is a CNC Facebook page that is currently not being run by anyone. Yeah, I'm not, I I do not have keys to that. So uh, I'm going to try to get some access to that. And if it's anywhere near as difficult as it was getting into the email address, it yeah. may take a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we're going to try to break that code and get into that so we can utilize it. Elaine's your first step. Elaine's going to be my first step. Yeah. We can reach out to Larry if Elaine doesn't know. Yeah. And yeah, go from there. Great. I feel like Elaine was posting on that last year. I think you're right. Um, and the other the other thing that we were gonna just connect on that we talked about before the meeting was um, holiday lights and and that because that's upon us. Uh... <laughs> it's coming quick. I know it's crazy. Yeah. So thank you, Monty. This is this is really helpful. And yeah, the intention was for just to get us in the same room and and open the dialogue up and and yeah. uh, and and hopefully we can just start you know collaborating and finding finding ways that that. Are, e are easy and, and reinforce your message and our message to right. make the community stronger. Oh, I, I love it. And I, I'm, uh, thank you so much again for, for asking me to come and, and chat. And like I said, I'm, I'm always available to, to, uh, either brainstorm how we can get the word out about something, but make, make sure that, uh, make sure that people know what's going on and, um, if, you know, if where to find information, if they want it. His office door is always open. I've checked. Yeah, <laughs> it's only when I gotta when I gotta you know hop on a Zoom call. It's about the only time that I have to close my door. But, so holiday lights. Uh, tell us about. Uh, uh, oh yeah, so holiday lights uh, has traditionally been run by this this committee, um, and it is a a contest um, that it, between the mayor and and CNC. Um, there's been. I think three or four sort of prizes um, and it's uh, judged. It had been judged by last year. It was CNC and then some kids, I think, and their families. I can't, I can't remember exactly what the makeup of the judges were, but there was like, you know, best traditional design, you know, most creative, you know, there were some superlatives there that they gave out three or four, awards and then a little a little gift of some kind and then um at a uh city council meeting in january i think they get they got like a mayor's award and the and a little gift bag and a handshake and a photo um but it it's kind of one of those things where it's you know spirit of the season you know really more than more than the 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 gift in the bag kind of thing that that people are doing it for yeah and, and it's i mean it's it it's kind of purposefully informal because we're asking kids to be the judges which is great but then yeah. we don't want to publish kids you know the names of right. the minors and you know so so it's kind you know we're, we're kind of using the parents as as kind of a uh right a translating you know uh group but not, again not really publicizing who they are so it's it's been kind of ad hoc uh okay and and that's that's been fine and it's and it's fun to to see the the, the responses of what you know yeah. what they what the kids like and and then our uh why you know what their votes are, are about but um you know if there's a way to maybe improve that or get greater participation sometimes we're really seeking out judges to to get enough to, to and, and it's a bit of a commitment it's a couple hours of driving around the city to to see all of the um the people who signed up for the content right yeah i think so i think sort of thinking about, about it from a, a marketing standpoint is marketing the the participation but then also marketing hey we're looking for volunteers to to be judges or you know establishing some sort of fun criteria to for for a judge like whether it's 
um, you know, a, a contest or something to to get to be a judge. I don't I don't know if that's a <laughs> like we'll worry about that when we're turning turning judges away, maybe. But you know, there you know, there's some some sort of uh, some sort of cachet to to being that that judge. What has the timeline been for that in the past, as far as when you start? To- um, so the the Christmas. yeah right the the one the one that I uh, I oversaw because I've uh, I've only ever done it once. It was oh man, we've got to go with this and let's let's get it organized and pulled together. And it was really um, I think if we start sometime now in October, have just a, a quick logistics call or meeting um and sort of figure out who's doing what and then yeah then sort of put the call out after halloween uh for for people to start thinking about holiday lights um and just let people know you know put up a put up a page for it and let people know that it exists and that we're we are doing it again um and then we can start to insert it in all of those communications whether it's on social or newsletter or wherever do we want to tie it into the Christmas parade or is there too much um, attached to that already? I mean, we can, we can sort of market it alongside, I think the, the Christmas parade, I think, you know, if we, if we talk about the parade and holiday lights and, you know, and other stuff going on in December for the city, I think it can kind of all run along together. Um, and the chamber has been really good about, about, um, uh, broadcasting as well for that um, it through either through vintage Christmas which they're running now um, that's a I don't know if you know vintage Christmas it's it's started out with music hall and strawberry bank working together to sort of promote all of the holiday shows um, in December and uh, chamber and the city runs a trolley around for helping people get to parking and all of that throughout through the weekends in in december um and it was really you know stay at a hotel come downtown for shopping go see a show do the do the holiday you know lights tour at at strawberry bank all of that kind of packaging it all together um and so the chamber is sort of the engine running that now um and they've been really good about always you know um uh amplifying the message about the parade and and holiday lights and gingerbread houses and all of that stuff so kind of making it making it a thing and then and then yeah how do we get the word out to people that they can go around and see all of these houses i know stephanie secord had built the map last year of where you know dropping the pins on where all the houses were um so that that would be an important piece too do we know how many houses participated in the past you say it's like 20 to 30 okay. yeah yeah and and it's i was when you said trolley i was thinking well, that, that would be really cool if we could organize a night where people could sign up to get in the trolley and the trolley would go up but they're they're pretty far afield yeah sometimes. It, it, it does take a while to get to every it single be a three hour trolley <laughs> <laughs> and then you're stuck on going to the island <laughs> <laughs> get a polar express going right yeah i remember watching the part of the mayor's live stream and did it like with his kids one year oh, he went around yeah. watched it and they're like i was like this is really long yeah um, okay. yeah, 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 yeah the middle yeah. bits yeah yeah um but i think you're right it, it spread out pretty good you know yeah you know when you were saying cachet i mean it, it, this adds some complexity but when we're going and, and reviewing, typically the CNC members are also, um, you know, going and reviewing and, and providing uh, input on on the lights as well. And sometimes there'll be there'll be a pin, and it's dark out, <laughs> and you can't necessarily see the number on on the property um, until you you know walk kind of up and and really see. So, and and sometimes there'll be adjacent properties that are really well lit up too, but they're not participating. It's kind of I... hard to tell. So I wonder if there's almost like a like if we could create some signs or like maybe it would say 2024 neighborhood or holiday lights or something. And then, and, and the participants could put that on their lawn. So they'd yeah. be easier to identify. And, and also they would have almost like a little badge of honor. Maybe it's yeah. not like, like a, a 
political sign, but right. more like a stake with a medallion or something. Yeah, that they could yeah. Then something, yeah. pull off and put as an ornament on their, you know, on a tr you know, like something that right. could kind of generate into into a keepsake, you know. Yeah, yeah, and e even if it's you know, uh, it's that, and then underneath it, you've got the QR code, so people walking by. Oh, what is what is this? They can they can scan it yeah. and see the the uh, map of everybody. So that's a good way to market the just that it's going on. You know, right. If you drive by one of the twenty houses, you'll see that, and then definitely. You know, this. That's a great idea. See already paying off. <laughs> <laughs> it's the execution part. I have it right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that. I have, I have <laughs> ideas all day long. <laughs> right. Uh, because we, we were also talking about about what the what the prizes would be and in what's you know what's appropriate for kids to get them excited. What's you know what where if there's access to um, if it's more kind of a monetized item or artifact like you know a present versus you know, breakfast with the mayor or, you know, or something like that. And, and, you know, what will, what would be a appropriate, be not expensive uh, and, and, and not kind of start to be a, a financial burden on the city. And, and then, right. um, but also get people excited. Yeah. Those are all good questions. <laughs> all right. What else anything to bring up? No. Um, nothing for me meeting adjourned yeah okay all right meeting thank adjourned. you all oh all right. second oh what oh. we're talking about um i got bridge the organization in town mm -hmm. has offered to their 15 passenger vehicle to do the actual judging oh we want to take advantage yeah, cool. of that okay great oh that's yeah that's Dang. awesome so we can get the judges in one van yeah and yeah. hopefully all your signs <laughs> yeah. are our signs by then <laughs> Yeah, yeah. help in place. Oh, that's great. that's great. Okay, so I'll let them know that we're interested. Definitely interested. Yeah. Yeah. We're warmer than the trolley. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, great. That's great. Yeah, that's wonderful. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Monty. Sure. Thank Always so happy to. And and like